Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we're looking at how to master with T-Rex. We'll use the T-Rex 5 Suite plugin and perform all of our routing and processing using solely IK Multimedia plugins. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you for free and send you a sample of it. The first insert I'm gonna use is Linear Phase EQ. First, I'm gonna set the EQ to Linear Phase Mode. This way I can affect the low frequencies without having to worry about altering the phase. I'll cut some of the infrasonic frequencies in the mid channel and cut up to about 80 hertz on the side channel. Then I'll cut a little of two kilohertz on the side channel so that the mid vocal has some room to sit and cut through. Lastly, I bump two kilohertz on the mid to amplify some of the clarifying aspects of the vocal. This way when the signal hits the next processor, two kilohertz will be a little stronger meaning it'll be more likely to cause some distortion at that range, trigger a compressor at that range, and so on. This gives the vocal a slightly more pronounced and unique timbre. The next insert I used was a de-esser. With some very subtle settings, I used this de-esser to control the high frequencies, mainly sibilance. I used a moderate release speed, three bands to isolate the frequencies, and a soft de-essing type to keep the effect subtle. This averaged around 0.3 dB to 0.7 dB of attenuation. Next, for my third insert, I used One, the mastering processor. One is an incredibly powerful processor. It was designed to include everything that you'd need for a quick master, but it can be used subtly in a chain to really augment the master. I added some air for the high end, some focus which clarifies the mids, a small amount of body for the low mids, a little push to bring quieter aspects of the signal forward, and a tiny amount of stereo expansion. I increased the gain without triggering the limiter, as well as introduced some moderate transient expansion and analog emulated harmonic distortion. Lastly, bass punch augmented the kick and the thump of the bass guitar. This will help the master translate better over small speakers that can't support the full frequency spectrum. Let's listen to our first three inserts on this master. The next two inserts I'm gonna use are in parallel to our series chain. So at the same time of processing the signal with the one mastering processor, I sent a parallel signal to a bus compressor and subsequent saturator. One thing I didn't expect for some reason was for the send to be set to unity in turn doubling the amplitude of the signal. I think since I didn't have a visual for the additional signal, this was a little confusing at first, but it makes sense when you think about running a signal in parallel. Now with that in mind, I reduced the output of both processors since I wanted this parallel channel to be introduced subtly. With the compressor, I heavily compressed the signal. This way, I could get a lot of coloration from the compressor and make the signal a uniform level in which the quieter aspects and the louder aspects of the signal were at an equal level. Then I used some saturation to make the effect more pronounced and get a bit more power from the compressed signal. I used a tape two setting which will provide some even and odd harmonics and enabled oversampling, which is important when you're introducing distortion. Additionally, I used mid-side processing to cause differing amounts of distortion to the mid and stereo signals. Next up, I got the Master EQ 432. Now prior to this insert, the series signal and the parallel compressed and saturated signal were recombined. With this EQ, I listened intently and decided on some very small amplifications that I wanted to make. I separated the signal into mid and side to affect the relevant instrumentation separately. On the mid, I boosted 120 Hz by 0.5 dB. I liked how this made the kick stand out a little more. I boosted 2.4 kHz by 0.5 dB as well to make the vocal stick out and feel more like a focal point of the song. Then I amplified 21 kHz by 0.5 dB to add a little air. For the side image, 
I amplified 570 Hz by 0.5 dB to add a little body to the side image. I amplified 4 kHz by 1 dB since it seemed to add a little clarity that was missing. Lastly, I amplified 21 kHz by 1 dB to make the high end of the acoustics and the reverb have more of an ethereal feeling to them. Let's take a listen to the last three processors that we used. The seventh insert is quad limiter. I used this limiter to make sure no peaking was occurring, but mainly to control the signal based on the frequency. I used three bands to separate the low, mid, and high, and amplify the low and high very slightly. I carefully set my thresholds to ensure that compression occurred rarely and only when it was truly needed. For the lows, I used a slightly longer release than the other two bands to avoid distortion on these low frequencies. The last insert was Stealth Limiter. To finish this chain, I used a limiter that I've tried before and I liked a lot for its transparency. My settings here were really simple. I introduced a mild amount of gain, which got the level of the master to around negative 10 LUFS, which is gonna be suitable for most streaming platforms. I reduced the output to negative 0.7 dB in case it gets uploaded online. This will help compensate for gain changes caused by encoding. I used the highest level of oversampling to make quantization as accurate as possible, in turn reducing distortion. I also use an infrasonic filter to reduce low frequencies that can't be perceived but still take up headroom. Lastly, I decided on Harmonix 1 since it offered a good balance between transparency and mild distortion that helps the transients stick out. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com to receive a free mastered sample of it. Also, you can stay up to date by subscribing, and liking the video really helps us out. Lastly, let us know your thoughts in the comments section. We want to know what you think about these plugins. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video.